Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is surround the ones and it is an easy level problem. So the problem statement says that we have been given uh, n into m matrix composed of only zeros and ones and we have to find the number of ones in the matrix that are surrounded by an even number of zeros, right? And that even number should be greater than zero. Now, what do we mean by a surrounding cell? So all the elements that are present above, below, left, right, as well as on the four diagonals around the cell of the matrix are called the surrounding elements of any matrix cell, right? So for example, if I'm talking about this particular middle element, then all the elements around it are going to be the surrounding elements, right? Now we have to find the number of ones which are surrounded by even number of zeros, that number should be strictly greater than zero, right? So this is our whole question. The time complexity is n into m and the space complexity is O of 1. Now this problem statement is very straightforward. We just have to apply brute force. We can just go through all the values. So let's say, let me just draw a grid first. So if I have a cell like this, so I'm going to go through all the values and let's say I am at this particular position. So I'm going to check in all the four. So I'm, so I'm going to check in all the eight directions from this particular cell like this, right? So you can visit all the cells and you can check what are the values in those cells. And you're going to check this only if the current element is one, right? And then you're going to count the number of zeros around the current cell. And if that number is greater than zero and an even number, that means you have to add one to your answer. Right, so this is how the whole question goes. Now, there is nothing much for discussion in this particular problem, but there is one thing that I wanted to discuss. So how do you actually go in all the eight directions? One way is to write if conditions for all the eight directions, right, separately. But one very interesting method that we generally used in grid BFS or grid DFS is that we maintain a DX and DY array. So this is going to be an array of size eight in this particular case. And let's say you want to go up, right? So let's say I write minus one here and I write zero here. Now let's say I am at a position i comma j and I am adding i plus dx of zero, right? And j plus dy of zero, right? So if I do this operation, if I make this transformation, I'm just adding dx of zero to my x coordinate and dy of zero to my y coordinate, right? After I do this transformation, I will reach a new position. And what is this position? You see my x or my row has been decremented by one and my column is the same. So if I do this operation, I will move one cell above my current cell, right? So you see, this is how you can change a position from one cell to a surrounding cell. Now you can apply the same idea to other positions as well. So for example, I want to go down. I can mark this as one and I can mark this as zero. So my row is going to get incremented by one and my column will not change. Similarly, let's say I write zero here and I write minus one here. So my column is going to get decremented by one and my row will not change. And this way I'm going to go to the left, right? And I can also do it like I will keep this zero and I'll mark it as one and my column will get incremented by one, whereas my row will not change, right? So what I can do is I can create an array of size eight. And uh, before looking at the code, I highly recommend you to fill rest of the eight values by yourself. So you don't have to do anything. You have to go in the up right, in the up left, down left and down right positions and you can do it easily. So for example, if you want to go to the top right position, you see that your Y or your column is getting incremented by one and your row is getting decremented by one. So you can write it like this minus one and one here, right? So this is how you can traverse in all the eight directions without writing if and else separately for all the eight directions, right? So this just helps you to write your code in a more maintainable and readable way and uh, it helps you to avoid unnecessary writing if conditions, right? So I highly recommend you to just form your array, this particular DX and DY array for yourself before watching the code. And after you have done it, you can easily verify it. So let me just show you my final submission. So you see what I've done is, this is my DX and DY array. This is how you should form it. The order of elements does not matter. It's just that the pairs should be correct. Now I initialize my answer with zero and I initialize my N as the number of rows with matrix size and I initialize my m with matrix of zero size, right? So this is my valid function. We'll come to it in a while, but let us see what I do here. I'm just going through all the values. And if matrix of ij is one, that means I will try to explore all the eight directions from here. Now I initialize my current as zero 
and I'm going in all the eight directions. You see, I've started my k is equal to zero till less than eight and k plus plus. I'm finding my new position as x is equal to i plus dx of k and y is equal to j plus dy of k. Now I'm adding one to my current variable if this new position x, y is valid. So let us see what we do in the valid function. First of all, I have a condition to check whether the new position x and y is even inside the grid or not. Right? If it is outside the grid, I can just directly return zero. Now, if matrix of x, y is equal to zero, I have to return one. Otherwise, I have to return zero. And only if x, y is inside the grid and matrix of x, y is equal to zero, then this valid function will return one and one will be added to my current. Otherwise, it will return zero. Now, if current means if current is greater than zero, I'm going to add one to my answer if this current is even. Right. So how am I checking it is even? So first of all, I'm doing current and one. It is going to tell me whether a number is odd or not. And then I'm taking its negation. So if a number is odd, it is not going to be even. And if a number is not odd, it is going to be even. That is why I'm taking negation. There is no other way in between. Right. So I can just add this value to my answer. Now at the end, I can just return my answer variable. And this will be my final solution. So let me just quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works. So you see it passes all the test cases and the solution is absolutely correct. I hope that you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. In case you're one of them, then definitely consider subscribing. It's always free of cost and you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So share this channel with your friends. Until the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.